what a what a day, y'all. My goodness. We had a really cool meeting the on uh, this morning at 8 for uh, our subscribers and for our borrowers. We, um, hey, everybody. It's Friday. It's 2 o'clock on March 27th. Um, we're not doing our standard video presentation today, but uh, Gavin Newsom just put out an executive order on evictions. So... Um, I, I wanted to go through some thoughts on here because actually I think it's it's for the most part it's good uh, there's some really great clarity and uh, real estate investors um, landlords you really need to do some preparing um, so I just decided to record this really quick on Fridays at 8 a.m. for VIP subscribers and the borrowers we do um, a, a live webinar uh, to where people can ask questions and we're doing presentations next week we have Amanda Hahn and uh, Matt McFarland with Keystone CPA going through um, I, I haven't even checked today if it was finally signed, uh, but uh, the stimulus package, what's in there for uh, the real estate community, which is good. Um, we're just trying to follow everything happening at the national, the state, and the local level. It's pretty tricky, but this executive order that I'm looking at is actually really nice because it clarifies some things. Every county and city, uh, the original order basically gave left it up to the local jurisdictions to... Um, to make a decision on how they were going to handle evictions and it it was a nightmare I, I don't even know how they would have done it so I want to walk through some of the updates that they did because it's it's good um, thank goodness because without that clarity ugh, it's gonna be super super terrible so if you go to let me see I want to make sure you know where to find all this stuff so uh, good resources so uh, let's see it's gov.ca.gov is the government website where you're going to get some some information oh it's not letting me share it's not letting me share my screen which is a real bummer let me see if i can do it again no nope, it's not letting me do it shoot so uh, gov.ca.gov that's where you're going to see all the updates by uh, gavin newsom so there's uh, for the state of california if you own rentals in california you're going to want to start there because that's where he's making some decisions for statewide and then you need to find out if that he's pushing the onus down to the county and the municipality level to find out more information so this was a good change so um let me see what i'll do is this i'll just show it to you how about that so this is executive order let's see boop, boop. oh boy this is going to be really hard to look at so anyway, it's executive order N-37-20, and it's update to what he put, um, he created, uh, I think last week. What was it, was it the 20th? Anyway, so let's see, right here. This is effective immediately. So yes, today, March 27th, great, okay. Uh, it is hereby ordered that the deadline specified in civil, uh, Code of Civil Procedure Section 1167 shall be extended for a period of 60 days for any tenant who is served. So being served, um, I don't know as a landlord, one of the things I want to cover next week is I want to make sure that I can start the process. I'll, I'll get into more of that later, but I don't think this prevents me as a landlord um, from doing the standard process for... Uh, California evictions uh, if it's for cause so let's get into the more uh, with complaint that seeks to evict the tenant from a residential or dwelling unit for non-payment of rent and who satisfies all of the following requirements and this is fantastic this is why I'm super excited I don't even know if that's going to focus to where you can see that which is a real bummer but let's hope so so a prior to the date of this order the tenant paid rent due to the landlord pursuant to an agreement yes that means they have to be current so if you're in the middle of an eviction this doesn't technically apply to them my biggest concern is that you're not a priority right now you really have to watch out for um, I mean the the sheriff uh, County sheriff might not be able to process. You're you're just not a priority, but it doesn't mean that they get off the hook if you are already in the middle of the, the eviction. B. The tenant notifies the landlord in writing before the rent is due or within a reasonable period of time afterwards, not to exceed seven days. Fantastic. Thank you for that clarity. That is amazing. Uh, that the tenant needs to delay all or some payment of rent because of the inability to pay the full amount due to reasons related to COVID-19, including but not limited to the following. Uh, 
I, the tenant was unavailable to work because the tenant was sick with a suspected or confirmed case of COVID-19 or caring for a household or family member. So, okay, they're actually sick or caring for somebody that's sick. Two, uh, the tenant experienced a layoff, a loss of work, or other income uh, reducing results from COVID-19. And three, the tenant needed to miss work to care for a child whose school was closed uh, in response to COVID-19. So uh, they have to fall into one of those to qualify for B. Fantastic. And then finally C, so they, we have to satisfy all of these. So they have to be current. They have to notify the landlord that uh, they're late or can only pay part because of those three things. And C, the tenant retains verifiable, verifiable documentation such as a termination notice, payroll checks, pay stubs, bank statements, medical bills, or signed letters or statements from an employer or supervisor explaining the tenant's uh, changed financial circumstances. Thank God they clarified that because that was something we were worried about. And without that kind of verification, how do you know? So this documentation may be provided to the landlord no later than the time upon payment of back due rent. So let's unpack that for just a second. So they don't have to provide backup until they have to pay that back due rent. The good thing is the state is basically saying they don't get out of paying rent. But when they do pay the backup, they need to provide you support. So being a good neighbor, you can't be charging late fees and all of that stuff. Yeah, housing first, y'all. Health and housing. Like, don't screw around. Be, don't be a jerk. Um, but this really sets the onus back on the, the tenant that they do need to provide this proof in a very clear process. I, I wish they could provide the proof sooner. However, you as a landlord need to be paying attention of the national, state, and local resources available to you. And if they are giving you this in a timely manner, it means that you're going to be able to uh, provide this as proof to like the SBA so you can get a loan. So as we sort of talk about next week, the package that's available, um, federal, if you as a property manager or landlord can end up um, getting a specific kind of loan that may be forgiven, um, either, who knows, maybe that looks like you get a check from the government uh, you, or you get it on your taxes later by getting to write it off as a full credit. Who knows? Um, but we need to document. Make sure you document this stuff. Um, and yeah, so that's good. So they need to be current. They need to notify you and they need proof. Um, what we'll be talking more about next week is if the landlord should be following the standard California eviction cycle. So uh, the process of letters and notification. Hey, Donica. I do have people watching. <laughs> um, it's just going to, I want to verify, and I'll be checking with the California Association of Realtors, the California Apartment Association, um, specific things on this. So as a landlord, can I go ahead and start the process? And here's why that's important. So say you have a tenant, I've, I've already heard it. So uh, a group of 30 people in an apartment got together and decided, I'm just not going to pay rent. We're collectively not going to pay rent. It doesn't mean that each one of them was impacted by COVID-19. It just means they've decided that it has in some way, shape or form. So um, they're just not going to pay rent. That's not very helpful. So they are going to have to prove to not just you, but also the government at some point, it looks like that that was the case. They don't get out of rent. They will uh, have it due. And there's just a lot of misinformation. You've got news channels saying, don't pay your rent. Don't worry about it. They can't evict you. So what are they going to do about it? It's really bad. The media really needs to work on educating uh, people that not everybody also has FHA loans uh, that are going to be given the kind of forgiveness. And it's funny because although all these banks are participating in some kind of moratorium and payment, it doesn't mean it's all going to look the same. And they're going to have to provide the same information. So as a landlord armed with this information, you can get in line for federal help yourself. So I really hope we decide to take a we're in this together stance, because if we do, we can all get uh, in line for resources which is helpful for everybody I've had conversations with you know my property managers that are saying hey if the tenants don't make rent I don't get paid I want to make sure that my property managers are taken care of and that they're supported why I'm not gonna allow them to go under either so uh, housing it just impacts us all um, so we're all tied in this together so the sooner you start documenting, the better. The sooner you start playing the game um, and getting in line for resources, the better for you if you need it. Um, I wish the proof wasn't delayed from the tenant, but okay, it is what it is. You as the landlord, you'll at least have notification within seven days of when their payment should have been due that you're going to be impacted and then you can go into action, which is great. Um, 
definitely watch the guidelines from the California Associated Real Realtors and the California Apartment Association, the Apartment Owners Association. All those California resources will probably do, be doing a much better job than I am keeping you up to date. And number three, make sure you look into local resources. There's a lot of um, loans that we have, and I, I know real estate investors, you know, you're in San Diego, Orange County, and LA, and you own in the Inland Empire. Um, because let's make sense, you know, you know, we're more affordable. <laughs> the cash flow makes more sense. At the local level, there's some interesting things that nonprofits are doing. So they're putting together money to provide grants for people who are in need. Um, I don't even want to mention it because I already know that they're over, that the need is already there and people have already signed up too much for what they had in stowe. But you never know what's going to be possible at the local level. So wherever you have the... Um, your rental definitely check with the city and check with the county and understand the difference if, if it's a city and they're under their own jurisdiction and they're making the decision or is it like an unincorporated city and part of the county you really have to find out what the difference is um and just you know let's work together i i, I hate um i just got off the phone on a meeting uh, with a local city, I was asked to be on the line um, to really talk about the perspective of the landlord um, and protecting business interest. And I, I was fighting for the the concept that the tenant needs to be engaged, but there's an education opportunity. If we're in this together, my expectation is uh, for me as a, a property owner and landlord, if a tenant comes to me and says, I can't pay, I'm playing, you know what, I totally understand. I don't want you to worry about being homeless. Of course, I'm not going to charge late fees. Let's work on this together. Are you, ava are, are you aware of A, B, and C, resources available to you? Uh, if it's unemployment insurance, is it um, you own a business and you're impacted? It's an SBA loan. Have you registered for them? Please do that right now. You are going to need that. And thankfully, I can point to this now and I can send them a government document saying, you're going to have to have this anyway uh, for proof. Um, just so you know, I'm thinking I'm going to go ahead and process, you know, the late notices. I need to do that to protect myself and I need proof for my documentation. If I'm going to sign up for federal assistance, I'm going to go ahead and, you know, do the late notices and whatnot. It doesn't mean I'm going to process the eviction. I can't, um, but I'm going to follow the steps. So come, you know, June 1st, when this order ends, if it's not extended, I have some rights and I'm not starting just there from day one. If you haven't been through an eviction in California, yeah. Uh, that's gonna be fun <laughs> that's gonna be really fun so anyway uh, let me see proof for my document